the BMW M3. I mean, it's an absolute legend. The E30 from the 80s really set the precedent to which this car has to live up to, but can it? In order to do so, this F80 M3 will have to be fast. It'll have to be fun, and it will have to be capable of running rings around the competition. And speaking of competition, this particular car has the competition pack and it's a three grand extra and it includes 20 rather than 19 inch alloy wheels, retuned dampers, springs and anti-roll bars for more precise handling. You also have a more lenient traction control system for a bit more fun and a retuned rear differential for added traction when exiting corners, plus a sports exhaust for a more boombastic exhaust note. The normal M3 starts at £59,000, while the competition pack is £62,000. But does it feel worthy of this price tag? For all intents and purposes, this car feels pretty much identical to a normal 3 Series inside, which is no bad thing. That means the quality is good and everything's easy to use. Plus, you get a fabulous infotainment system. It's one of the best that you can get on the market. The only thing is, though, there are some M trinkets in this car. So I've got an M steering wheel, M dials, obviously got M gear lever. We've also got, on this particular car, some carbon fibre effect trim, which doesn't look tacky at all. It looks really good. And I like these wing back seats. They are super comfy. Red leather? Do you know what? On a normal 3 Series, I'd go, Bleh. but on this car, I think it's perfectly acceptable. What's also acceptable is rear passenger space. But is the boot big enough? Yes. Well, that's the sensible stuff dealt with. Let's crack on with something more fun. Now, one thing that I didn't tell you about the competition pack was that it also liberates an extra 19 horsepower from the car's three litre straight six twin turbo engine. So you now have 450 horsepower and 550 newton meters of torque. And according to BMW, in this car, with a dual clutch DCT automatic gearbox, that's good for 0 to 60 in four seconds dead when you use launch control. So let's use launch control to see how fast this car really is. I logged the car at 4.4 seconds to 60. Ah, that's close enough. I find this engine absolutely stonking. It's super responsive and has so much low down punch. So, blimey, it just flies. And it's pretty relentless as well. The only thing is, though, despite the fact this car's got a sports exhaust... The exhaust note is it's just a noise that gets louder. It's not really that great. But there is more to this car than just straight-line performance and exhaust noise. Now, one thing about the M3 is that <laughs> it can't half-handle well, it really does. If there is one problem, it's that the steering doesn't have all that much feel, but the actual grip at the front end is really strong, and at the back end, though, it's still quite easy to, well, to lose traction if you put your foot down in a turn. Yes, huge tail slides are possible when you turn all the driver's aids off. However, if you want to just drive around like a normal person, you can. Now, with this M3, I can alter lots of different settings independently, so I can change the throttle response between three modes. The suspension between Sport Plus, which is too firm for on the road, but all right on the track. Sport, which is too firm for on the road and not firm enough for on the track. Or Comfort, which is not firm enough for on the track and still a little bit too firm to tell you the truth, but just about okay, I guess. I can also change the weight of the steering. I'm gonna go for Sport. Doesn't really make much difference. I could change the ferocity of the shifts of the automatic gearbox between three stages and I'm going to go full on ferocious because I want this car to excite me. And then it does even more so. So the M3 is a car you can set up just as you like it. That makes it easier to live with every day than you might think. Now I've actually spent quite a bit of time with this car and it is a great all-rounder, it really is. But there is one thing above all else that just gets on my nerves about it. I don't know if you've noticed it yourself yet, but I mean, can you hear that? That constant roar from the tyres, it's just, it's way too loud. Really though, this is the only major criticism, and you can forgive the M3 of this one failing when you consider all the things that it does do well. 
So then, this M3 is a fantastic all-round performance car. It can do it all a bit like the E30 M3. The only thing is, is that the E30 M3 was the best car at its time. Unfortunately, this isn't, not quite. It's just edged out by the new Alfa Giulia Quadrifoglio. Still, it's a great car. And if you want something German, something that feels really well made, it's a great choice. Now, if you want more of our video content, just click on the video windows around here. You can see my review of the Alfa Giulia Quadrifoglio and a group test between this car and the Alfa and the Mercedes C63 AMG. Also click on our logo to subscribe.